We'll make it through this game of murder alive. Clock Tower. Hello guys, welcome back to Let's Play some Clock Tower, and my capture card still flickers, God damn it! even though I edited it to make it look like it would do better, but it doesn't, you little bastard, why don't you agree with me? Why don't you love me the way you're supposed to? Tell me how am I supposed to live without you? Okay, enough of that. You said your hard drive crashed. That's too bad, Jimmy Gijilicus. Yes, I lost all this morning's data. I hope I can get it fixed sometime today, otherwise, I won't get my dissert dissertation. Dissertation, that's it. Dissertation. Done on time. Don't worry, when Danny gets back, I'm sure he'll be able to help you. Look at my boobs! You're probably right. In the meantime, I'm going to step out for a bit. Would you ask Danny for me, please? Oh, sure thing, love. See you later. Where should I go? Here is the map. Where do you wish to go? Am I the only one that's hearing some form of feedback or something? Ah, doesn't matter. The police station. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. Indeed, it is the police station. Assistant Inspector Gotts. The person in charge of the clock tower case is here. Well, hey, Teach. Got some new info? No. Have you got any leads? Nope. Nothing. That old geezer of yours. He ain't coming clean. Do you mean Professor Barton? Yeah, that's him. I oh, don't worry about him. He's an asshole. He said there ain't nothing straight about the case. Yes, that sounds like Professor Barton. I mean, all I am is an insistent inspector. I'm in go I'm involved in the goddamn case, and he acts like he knows it more than me. Seriously, what about that little cutie? Jennifer? She's still having nightmares. Occasionally. I ain't surprised. She was almost slashed up, too, wasn't she? Well, let me know if you learned something. And does my voice kind of sound like that, uh, dude? That Nolan guy, who I have no idea about. Anyone? No? Well, Jim McGillicuz. I'll be mobbed by reporters if I go over there. Yes, because you're the one people want to talk about. Yes, Edward and his Guardian. Yes. Norway. They're here. Dun dun dun. Oh, Helen. How's it going? Any results from Professor Barton's therapy? No, but we can't give up hope. Sometimes something will jog one's memory. Yes. Will you be staying here long? Mr. Barton always thought it a good idea. Also, fuck. We plan to stay here for a while. Oh, really? Well, hang in there, Edward. Yes, Miss Maxwell! I didn't realize it was this late. I've got to get back to the university. No, we're going to the Metropolitan Library. Many university people use it. So yeah, fuck you, we're not going yet. That man. Hello, Helen. Mr. Sullivan. What are you doing here today? Oh, nothing really. Just thought I'd drop by. Oh, I see. I wanted to show you my collection. And this is kind of hurting my throat. I've just had a new piece. Oh, God, that hurts. Thank God we only need to talk to him so smallly. Alright, let's get back to the building. <sighs> Time to work on that dissertation. Dissertation, dissertation.
Oh, Miss Maxwell. I replaced your hard drive. Thanks, that's a big help. I'm going down to the lounge for a short nap. What are you going to do? We'll be all going home soon. Oh, okay. Well, no need to lock up. Okay. Well, that was blimin' fast. Scenario 1. Helen Maxwell. So glad to know we're finally in Scenario 1. Talk to this bitch. Is that you, Baker? Oh, it's you, Helen. Baker's still in the lab. Rose, are you seeing Baker again here? Yes, sort of. Well, no matter how late it is, remember, don't use the university as a motel. Let me sleep a little longer until Baker comes. I think it's about time for a nap. Would you turn off the light, please? I can't sleep with it on. Of course. I really gotta solve this capture card problem. Can't keep it the same settings for every game, cause lord knows that'd be a good idea, but... Hey. <sighs> I'll take a quick cat nap and then work on my report. Okay, the graphics weren't the greatest thing ever, but this is still a good game. Shut up! Let me have my fun! Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange who? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, you must be Mr. Baker. You know, I know a Mr. Baker in real life. You look nothing like him. Yeah, because I know him because he's alive. Oh, it's Scissor Man. Hello, Scissor Man. How are you doing? You're taking an awfully long time to get to me, you know that? Oh, time to go! And no, the game is that actually laggy. Frame rates. Okay, now there's gotta be a defensive item somewhere. Really? Nothing? Oh well, let's take the elevator then. This usually dries them off. And we get this very interesting cutscene. You know, the way they talked about, um, Clock Tower, this, the whole series in general, if you decide to follow it, and try to get explanations through, like, the wiki and all that, it's kind of odd why he, why, um, Scissor Man doesn't do what he does. Out of, um, spoiler's sake, I really don't want to say anything, but in other times, I just really don't care and I should just, you know, speak what I want. So you know what? Yeah, I'm just gonna talk about it. Fuck it. Basically, from what I understand about, from reading the Clock Tower wiki and stuff like that, I learned that, um, the twins, Danny and Bobby, were supposed to die at birth. However, because of, um, Mary, Mary, yeah, that's her name. Because of Mary's, um, intervention with a satanic ritual, she stopped time. She stopped time in the little area she had. Okay, I need to talk. Come on, say something. 
get back to what you were saying. Basically, the children were supposed to die, but Mary engaged in a satanic um, ritual, which basically saved her boys by stopping the clock tower, thus making time stand still in the Barrow's mansion. However, which was called Clock Tower, but however, they couldn't leave. Otherwise, they would be dead. So, Mary was bringing victims to da to Bobby. That's the, that's the Scissor Man of the first game. One for, Bobby, one for Bobby's enjoyment, and two, because Danny was plotting something. He was invoking something to make sure he could escape that rule. The fax machine rings. And basically in order to do that, he needs to construct himself a body. Thus, why in the first game he's a giant purple baby. That was basically like a cocoon for a caterpillar, if you will. And inside the giant purple baby was the body that is now known as Edward. So yes, in case you were wondering, Edward is the Scissor Man, he's also Danny Barrows. There's nothing else here for us to grab, so let's go. Yeah, might as well get the facts. Okay, yeah, I've really got to do something about this. i got to keep editing it until it's, like, goddamn perfect. Basically, Scissor Man's giving us a jump scare. And so when Jennifer burns the giant purple baby, in the Japanese version of the first clock tower, please, please relax, ma'am. Did you see the murderer? You actually see Danny coming out of the remains of the burnt up purple baby body before you continued the game. Wait. However, in the American release, that never happened. And to be honest, I am actually better off with the American version because it gives it more of the element of surprise in this game. You've got to help or he'll kill me too. Because if you play because if you played the Japanese version and you saw that and then you found Edward, you kind of could have pictured two and two together. Which kind of destroys the premise of, you know, it's supposed to be a surprise. So that's a good thing. Alright, we're done here. Time to go. Do -do -do. We need to pick up something on the second floor here. Oh, wait a minute. Not a, no, I don't think we do. I think I'm just wasting time. Helen's desk. Oh no, I left the key to the office laying here. So yeah, sorry about the long pauses, guys. I have no idea what was going on. But yeah, that's the explanation so far. It's actually very interesting if you look up lores of, like, Clock Tower and stuff. Monty Ground in turn also is very interesting as well, if you decide to look it up. We need to go in here. There's a key laying on the table. What's this? Storage key. What's that dripping noise? Well, I'll investigate it. Yay! Hmm. 
I haven't really run into Scissor Man, really. Okay. Well, we're about done here, so it's time to actually leave. No need to milk out this episode any longer. Come on. Through that door. Or was it the next one over? Yes, it was this one. Okay, I get it. This should be the storage room. Yep. Take the pliers to the door. Yeah. It worked. Now take the key. It opened. I've got to get to my car and fast. And we are done. So yeah, that's it for this episode of Clock Tower. Took a little longer than expected due to the fact that I was absent-minded and forgot what I was completely talking about. But don't worry, I think I've basically summed it up right there. Now, I'm going to cut the video here, and in the next episode of Let's Play Clock Tower, I'm going to see if I can finally get this capture card to stop flickering.